Hey there, it's Caroline. Let's take a peek at how to do a functional behavior assessment today. So you're gonna log into your account in the membership, of course, and scroll down here to the green tab with functional behavior assessments. We're gonna click on that one, and it's gonna open up the functional behavior assessment grid. This start here is where you found this training video. Adding the functional behavior assessment is what we're getting ready to do when we're doing an observation. Here, this is where we're gonna view all the different ones we've done before. And down here, this best practices gives you tips on how to write a functional behavior assessment and how to do the observation. So let's click on this to add the observation assessment first. It's gonna give us two choices. It's gonna ask if we wanna do the observation only with just a summary, or do we want the observation with a summary and at the end, it's going to give us a sheet um, with all the additional information for student strengths, supports, and accommodations. So we're gonna click the bigger one just to get a bigger picture, but you can always come back and change that or update it as you'd like. Today, the student that we are observing is Jack Horner. So we are going to select Jack's pronouns and what grade level Jack is in. Today's date appears right here for the observation details, as does the start of the observation, as this is the exact time that I'm filming this. My name and uh, my title automatically fill in here because I'm logged in as the user. Um, I am going to observe Jack in the general education room along with 25 other students. And there's one teacher right now, and in the classroom, there does happen to be an additional an adult with an instructional assistant. Okay, so the next page is going to ask us to say what subject we observed. If we observe more than one, we're just gonna do it in real time. So when I walk into the room, I start with English, and again, it popped open the exact time that I'm working on this. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add any behaviors as I see them in real time. So again, this pops open with the exact time. I'm gonna say I did see some physical aggression, Jack did hit himself, um, it appeared when he was um, asked to do something. When I scroll down, I can pick either seeking or evading on this one, and I am gonna say that it was an evasion um, to get um, away from that demand or request. The consequences were that um, he was given some assistance, and if there's any note that I wanna put in here, I can do that. So um, the teacher helped Jack get a fidget and get started on the assignment, okay? Then I'm gonna to continue to do that as any um, behavior comes along. So I might go in here, I might say engagement. At this time, he is being non-responsive. He's sitting there um, alone by himself, not working, not being a problem. Um, and that is because, again, he just doesn't want to do that activity. At this time, the teacher ignored that, and Jack is sitting at his desk looking out the window. And again, I'm making those sentences as extremely, um, as extremely simple as possible, easy to understand for the the viewer. So I can continue doing that. You can see it's dividing these by categories. We put one in it, physical aggression, one in engagement, and we haven't done anything in refusals yet. Let's go ahead and add a refusal. Um, so the teacher said, hey, Jack, you need to get busy. He refused, and he made an inappropriate comment to the teacher. Um, that was, again, because there was a demand placed on him. We are starting to see a pattern here with Mr. Jack. And um, Again, he had a demand, and the consequences were that the teacher did some redirection. So let's say that um, he did that inappropriate comment, so let's add what Jack said. Jack stated, I don't like your dumb face. Mm -hmm. Poor Jack, such a sad thing to say. So we're gonna add that in here, and again, we would continue going along, once we come up, let's say that this, the, they do transition to a bathroom break, I could say um, transitioned to a restroom break. And during that time, if we add a behavior, that'll be clocked a little differently. So some physical aggression. He was stomping in the hallway um, during a transition 
and that was probably to get someone's attention and the teacher ignored that. I'm not going to add a note this time, I'm just going to add the behavior. And again, we can keep going with as many of these as possible. I'm going to go ahead and say next. Now, if you did observation, observation only, it would stop there and it would give you a summary of what you just did. But since we selected the other one, we are going to get a little more information to do. You can see why you might not want to do this every time. So um, who is on the committee for Jack? This teacher um, of record, his regular teacher, the school psychologist and administrator, of course, obviously the parent, and we could say other. Um, so let's put my name in for the teacher of record. And um, Jim Warner is a parent. School psychologist is Jane Smith. And the teacher of record is Diane Paul. The administrator is Jennifer Hansen. Oops. And the other would be, let's say, um, outside service provider. And that is John Doe. So the strengths for each of these, you can pick as many as possible or add your other. I'm gonna go ahead and just say that Jack has these strengths for academics and communication. I don't know if he accepts responsibility. He um, sometimes is honest. Maybe, maybe that person really didn't have a great face. Um, and then lacking or missing skills. So what skills seem to be a problem? Seemed like we were during language art, uh, watching during language arts, maybe some comprehension was an issue. Maybe he is in speech for expressive language. And again, we can hit other if something else comes up. Life skills, he seems to have a communication issue, has problem asking for help, um, might have some social skill needs, and um, might have problems working independently or with others. What assessment tools that we've used? We most certainly um, are using a observation for this one. And you can add any of these that you would use when you're doing your big analysis. Hopefully some medical records, hopefully any discipline records that you have, maybe an interview with um, the student and the parent, whatever, whatever you are using in your school. And what positive supports does Jack already have in place? He has classroom rules, he has um, some social stories, and we can always say others if he has, um, let's see, um, outside support coming to school on Tuesdays. And what about environmentally? Um, he ha does have an allowed or scheduled break, and he also has a place where he can walk or pace. People who are helping him already, um, he does go and see the nurse sometimes. And again, the outside, well, let's go ahead and move that over here. Let's put that into people. That would make a lot more sense. So now additional proposed positive behavior supports. Um, I really want to see him using a first then board and or a toko board and definitely needs to get some more social stories going. Even though we have them, we can always do more social stories. Um, I'd like to see him use the calm down room. Oh wait, we did say he used a fidget earlier. Let's add that back in there. And um, I'd like to see him having um, maybe some headphones see if that um, does anything for him. And people, people that are helping him. He might need a homeschool advisor, depending on what we decide. And he might some, need some social worker support. All right, frequently observed causes of behavior escalation. We're just picking what we notice um, helps with de-escalation. So a preferred activity almost always helps. The calm down room hopefully will help. An action, let's have controlled choices for him, and let's remove um, environmental stimulus, and let's reward those positive behavior choices. Frequently observed causes of behavior escalation, definitely academic work, multi-step directions for sure, and anything involving the teacher instruction. Action, he likes to be in a disagreement or an argument if you raise your voice or if you try to enter into a power struggle. And presently, what accommodations does he have? Right now, he only has read aloud to self. Response, um, he is, 
is um, he has none of those right now. Setting, he does get to be tested in a small group and he does get additional breaks for timing. So for a proposed additional accommodations, we might want to say that he might want to be able to read it aloud to himself, which would probably put him in one-to-one -one testing. And let's see if alternate indication of response would help him. And um, let's see, extended time as an additional one as well. Then we need to say what his hypothesis of, of concern is. I'm going to take this example here. This is how I like to do it. Paste it into the box. And then I'm going to say when the noted, the note the observation cause, the note the observed cause of behavior escalation. When academic work is presented, Jack evades the work in a perceived attempt to avoid engaging in the activity. Now again, you can do whatever structure that you would like. Um, that is just an example of one that I like to work off from. So now I need to say, does Jack's behavior negatively affect him, his um, self-learning or others? And if so, I say yes. If it requires a behavior plan, then I say yes to that as well. Any extra notes can always go here. I'm gonna hit submit on this one. And it says there was a problem. Please review my fields below. Oops, I need to take that away. Now let's try it again and see if we're good to go. Uh, did it not? Oh, nope, we got it that time, okay. All right, so let's open the PDF and see how it looks. So again, make sure you always allow your pop-ups here. Here is the observation summary that comes right out. This is everything that you recorded um, within the observing time. And this is what will happen if you only select that first one. This box um, will come up for the, uh, sorry, this box will go along with the first page as well um, for both ones that you pick. But this right here, this summary, is what will come up if you have um, summarized both that and you want um, the GERD summary for his, um, for a larger report. So it looks like this. You can always go back in at any time and edit it by going here, selecting this edit button, and it will let you go back through and make any changes that you need to. Again, we can select this one if we'd rather, if we've spelled anything wrong, whatever changes, all that business. If you do a new observation though, I would not recommend going and editing it. Just add a new one, starting over with Jack, and just select your observation only this time. So select this, go back through and do a new observation, and you will be good to go on that. If you want to see all of the um, functional behavior assessments that you've done, go to View. And once that opens, you'll see I did one in May, and then I did the one today here on Jack. And that is the fastest way to do a functional behavior assessment with just typing and a click of a few buttons. All right, good luck, enjoy.